How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video where we're going to be going over the Java 17 features. Now Java 17 did come out September of 2021, so it is a couple months old. So Java 17 includes a couple of syntax changes, some deprecations of classes and interfaces, and some additional under the hood changes. So overall nothing major, but I think it's still good to go over, especially the changes in syntax, just in case you ever run into it, you're not like, what the heck is this? So if we look at the Java version history, Java SC17 is an LTS version, meaning that it has long-term support. So it is being maintained and supported until September 2029, at least. Java is currently on a six-month cycle, so every March and September, there's going to be a new release. This is in contrast to earlier versions of Java, which came out like once every few years. And every time there was a release, it was like a big thing. I remember I was in grad school when Java 8 came out and streams were a new thing. But nowadays, uh, even if there are minor changes, there are releases, which I think is better. That way we don't have to wait for a major release to get small updates. Before we continue, uh, if you haven't joined the Keep On Coding Discord channel where you can discuss topics like this, uh, make sure you go ahead and do that. It's totally free and there's a link down in the description. All right, so the first syntax change I want to go over is pattern matching for switch statements. So currently say we have a method here called formatter. It takes an object and based on what type of object that is, it formats a string and, re and returns it. So what you could do is you could just have a bunch of if statements here or else ifs. With the pattern matching techniques, you could do it like this. So here it simply returns a switch statement. And for each case, we just have one line here using arrow notation. Based on what case it is, it runs the, uh, the appropriate code. So as you can see here, just a lot cleaner, a lot simpler and a lot smaller than the previous code. So traditionally switch statements and expressions throw null pointer exceptions. So you'd have to test for null outside of the switch. Now, as you can see here, now you could actually have a case that's null. So that's pattern matching for switch statements. The next thing I wanna go over is sealed classes. So currently if you have a class and you want to extend it, any class inside of your project can extend that class. It's not limited to anything. But say for whatever reason, you only want specific classes to extend a class. What you can do is you can use the keyword sealed. So what that would look like is you would have something like public abstract sealed class, and then the name of the class shape. So say you only want shape classes to extend this. You don't want some random class extending your shape class. What you would do is you'd write permits, which is also a keyword. And then here we have circle, rectangle, and square. So now these are the only three classes that it can extend the shape class. Now, another thing to mention is that circle, rectangle, and square, they now must be either final, sealed, or non-sealed classes. So that's pretty much it for the code changes. Uh, there are some other minor changes that I'm just briefly gonna go over. So some of the under the hood changes, we have the restoration of always strict floating point semantics. Basically, it, it makes floating point operations more consistent. We also have enhanced pseudo random number generators. So it just adds new interfaces and types for pseudo random number generators. Now there are some changes to Mac OS. I don't develop on a Mac, so I don't really, I didn't really look into these, uh, but there are things like porting the JDK to Mac OS a Arch 64, deprecating the applet API for removal and a new rendering pipeline for Mac OS. Again, I will leave a link to this article in case you wanna look more into it yourself. Finally, we're just gonna talk about some things that were deprecated. So there's the security manager that was hardly used. So that's now deprecated in Java 17. And then finally, there's the removal of the experimental ahead of time and just in time compilers. So basically there's like little use of these, but there's a require, there's a significant requirement of maintenance. So they probably just didn't wanna to have to deal with that. And most people just use the Graal compiler anyways. All right, so that's a brief overview of Java 17. Um, like I said, very minor changes. If you feel like I missed something or if you wanted to add something yourself, uh, make sure you leave it down in the comments. And also let me know if you like videos like this, if you want me to do more, kind of like more current event stuff with, uh, with new languages. Um, I felt like this was appropriate for this channel since I do talk about Java a lot and I have Java tutorials. So yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, keep on coding.